Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So um, on today's agenda, uh, we have a tutorial on how to make a organic character design. Um, I'm using the character Eevee from Pokemon as my example here. And yeah, you can see um, the, uh, the, the details here are really nicely done. Um, and I'm gonna take you through the entire process. It is a bit of a long one, but there's a ton of information in here and um, you'll leave this series uh, feeling like you've got a really good handle on using subdivision surfaces and um, different use cases for different types of uh, geometry. So yeah, it's uh, I think a, a long but extensive video. We've got three parts. First part, we're just gonna be making the head. Second part, we're gonna be making the body with all of the fur. And the third part is going to be creating a photorealistic rendering um, using a background, an HDRI background, and kind of talking about all of the different rendering functions available within Rhino 3D. So this is the final rendering. So um, buckle up, uh, uh, watch the videos, take notes, um, and just uh, try your hardest to uh, uh, learn some new techniques. So without further ado, let's start with the first part. So whenever I'm starting a character design, I like to start with the face. I mean, the face is not usually the easiest part, but at the same time, it gives you a nice uh, proportional grounding area. Um, and what we're going to be doing with this one is we're going to be introducing um, a bunch of new tools uh, related to subdivision surfaces. So if I go up to my window up here and click on SubD tools, it brings up a new toolbar. Um, I'm in the front view here, so uh, make sure that if you are in your standard view, you switch to a front view. Double click on that window to do so. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stay with perspective view. Why not? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so in the perspective view window, I'm going to draw a sub D sphere, which is this dude. Now, what a subdivision surface is, is it's very similar to what a program like Blender or Maya or Cinema 4D will use for modeling tools. So the nice thing about Rhino is, is you have all of those standard subdivision surface tools that you would get in other software suites, but you've also got solid modeling, which makes it really more accurate for architectural and industrial design stuff. So best of all worlds, as I've said before. Here we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to use a subdivision surface of a sphere. And up here you can see the different, um, the different settings for the sphere. Because we want it to be a symmetrical object, I'm going to leave it in the standard settings here. The one thing I want to make sure you have is your subdivisions. So this is the amount of, of, of squares on each side. So on all six sides there will be two squares six sides of a sphere complicated right but yeah so let's go ahead and so basically it's six times two is the number of subdivisions so i can show you real quick if i click on that and i change it to actually let's do it first subdivision zero for our starting point kind of pull it out that's two okay subdivisions change it to one zero that's going to be one and you can see there's one there and there's one there there's one there there's one there one there one there one there so it's basically um on all of the sides of the object it, there's there's one subdivision around the baseline whatever you know you'll you'll see and kind of get a better feel for it it's harder to understand and comprehend when you're looking at a uh, sphere versus like a cube or something so those are subdivisions i'm going to do subdivisions of two to enter, start at zero, enter, and I'm going to hit D, enter for diameter, and my diameter is going to be 35 mil, uh, millimeters, okay? There we go, two, 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 okay, so there's, yeah. All right, so the nice thing about sub Ds is you can play with the edges, you can play with the faces, you can, you know, kind of really get into the minutia of the object. Um, and I'm going to start off by making the overall shape of the snout of our character. Um, and I'm going to go to my sub D tools here and you have these over here, which are subdivision selectors or over here. You've also got it. 
Um, if you just click on one of these, you'll notice I'm going to do a vertice here. So I'm going to click on this and you'll see I've just got the vertice selected there. I'm then going to select our maybe our lower one here and I'm going to bring it out and up to kind of give it that nose look. And I'm going to check it from the side, make sure that it's protruding the right amount, kind of pull it out a little bit more. Another thing that we have when we're controlling these different vertices is soft select, uh, soft transform. So if I select that tool um, while I've got the vertices selected, I can change the size of this object. So if I make it like that giant, it's going to pull the whole face versus, you know, versus if I make it really tiny, I can make minute changes like just to the snout. So soft transform that exists in other softwares as well. Um, super handy. Awesome. Let me go ahead and rotate. Hold down shift, rotate it up. Okay. Mm, it's a little too harsh. I think that actually looks fine. All right. So that's going to give us our little snout shape. Now we want to kind of change maybe um, the overall top of it. So I'm going to go to maybe the uh, face selection here and shift select a few of these. And I'm going to pull it up slightly. And then I'm actually going to shift and make it a little bit square. So I'm shifting. See, you can, whoop, no, 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 no. Didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. So left to right select with the face selection on. We'll grab whatever it's surrounding. I'm just trying to square the top a little bit more. Okay. And then left to right select on the back half here. Get right there. I'm going to kind of pull that in a little bit because it's a little flatter on the back of the head. Okay. And now let's do the cheeks or the, you know, kind of puff out the sides a little bit. Here I want to actually turn on our symmetry so that anything I do to one side of the object, it's going to do the equal thing to the other side. Um, this comes in handy when you're doing faces because faces are symmetrical or anything symmetrical, right? Um, that's right here. And we just click on that and then make sure your snaps are turned on. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the object and it wants me to kind of draw a line. And I can even use uh, maybe my grid snap down here and just use the zero snap to, to the zero snap. And you can see that little window comes up and click on the front and the back there. And then it's asking, did this look right? And you can say yes. So now anything I do to the gray side will happen to the darker gray side. So I'm going to now switch to edge selection, which is this one here. And grab this edge and shift and grab that edge and pull it out. Oh, I got grid snap on. <laughs> I'll turn that off, but you can see what it did to it, right? So now if I come back, I can kind of pull it back in a little bit. Well, a little bit more. Whoops. Shift selecting. All right. And then I do want to kind of like maybe pull the scale out a little bit that direction. So it kind of transitions a little, actually, you know what? Let's undo all the way back here. And I'm going to shift click. I got to add to this selection here. I could also change the soft transform to make that work a little bit better, but I'm going to pull this out and then out this way a little bit. All right, looks okay. I think I might actually even want to add another um, another vert uh, edge line into this so that I can make it a little bit more uh, controlled. So if I double click on this, I get an edge loop and I can come up here and I can go to insert sub D edge loop, click on that and then if I drag down below, uh, do I have, what do I have, snaps on or something? What's going on? Let me disable this. I 
just kind of hover right about there. Okay. So that you see inserts another loop and every time you add another loop, that's another opportunity to add a level of detail to it. So now when I um, grab escape, this and this and this, I can make it have a little bit more of a dramatic because it, it'll be a little less susceptible to uh, to the overall shape of the object. It, it's more stuck between these edge loops. And then I'm going to zero out my sub-object selection here. Okay. Let's look at it in rendered just to kind of see how our object looks. I feel like the nose is a little bit too pointed. So let's see. How do I change that? Go back to shaded here. And I will... Let's select this edge right here and then kind of pull it down a little bit there we go soften that a little bit more nah. let's actually insert another edge loop here now that's actually making it worse all right Okay, so I think that's probably good enough for now. Um, I also maybe want to pull down. Let me change my sub object select soft selection here, make it a little bit bigger here. And then kind of pull these areas down. Cool. All right. Now I feel like the whole head is a little bit fat, so cancel this out so I can grab the whole thing, and then I'm gonna pull the whole head in a little bit. And control shift click just to sub select that and pull the nose back a little bit. You know, I mean, artistic license, whatnot, you can kind of uh, do with it what you will. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab these bottom faces, left to right, select down here. And push it up some, so it's a little bit flatter on the bottom. It's all looking good. Back of the head, a little bit flatter. All right. And then I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab this whole area here and push it down a little bit. And I think I'm going to Let's see what happens if I do this. Grab these two, pull it down. Grab these two, pull it up. Just trying to soften that transition a little bit and then pull in the face some. Change my soft transform to small so I can just pull in the nose. All right, cool. So I think that looks good. All right, now we want to add the features, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And I will do that in a front view, and I'm going to do that actually over to the side over here. So I'm going to draw a circle, and that circle diameter is going to be a diameter of 10. So I hit D, enter for diameter, and I'm going to hit 10, enter, and then I'm just going to draw it. Whoops, circle, enter. Select the base point, D, enter, 10. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to use the control points. So if I click on this object, you can see I've got these little points here. I can grab one of them or, uh, well, actually, no, I'm sorry. I got to turn the points on to go points on. So, points on select the object enter 
and then I want to add more points to it. So these points are, are, are areas where I can control it. So I can grab these points on this object and move things around. Oh, however, I've got my um, selection filtering turned off, turned on. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my sub D tools and click on selection filter none. Okay, so that you can see, or you can just check all these one at a time. So then I can left to right select and grab um, a control point and I can pull it in. And you can see that that allows me some freedom, but I want more areas to grab because I'm going to change this to more of kind of like a amoeba kind of eye shape. So let's go ahead and rebuild this object, enter, and 10 and 3 is all good there. Same settings, just use my settings. Delete input, yes, okay. So now the whole thing, I'm gonna bring in the scale on, and then I'm gonna left to right select on this point and move it up slightly. And then this point over here, I'm gonna kind of pull this direction. And then this point up here, I'm gonna pull a little bit that direction and down. And then I'm gonna pull it all in a little bit too. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a little circle for the eyes, little, like there's a little glare on the eye. Do that there, cool, looks good. And then the space between them, I'm gonna draw a line from kind of the end of the object here, this direction, and the space is about 13 millimeters. Click, so line. 13, click. And then I'm gonna mirror this, so M, ooh, control Z, mirror. From the midpoint, click, draw a line up, click. Okay, so that gives me the eyes with the spacing there. And then let's go ahead and draw a line down from the midpoint here to about the bottom of the eyes is where the nose is going to start and click and we'll do another circle this circle we're just kind of eyeballing it because it's a small one and click and then again rebuild same amounts fine okay and then i'm going to left to right select these two dots scale them out move them up into kind of a nose like shape. Maybe grab this one and this one. Ooh, control Z is our friend. Select these ones and scale it out slightly. Cool. So looks like a nose. Move it down a little bit. All right, mouth time. So with the mouth, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line down from the midpoint here again. And I don't even really care where I put it. I'm just gonna put it right there. I'll move it around so it looks more proportionate afterwards. So let's go ahead and use the line tool. So type line. This time I'm gonna click on both sides or just hit B, enter, both sides. And this line goes about to the edge of the eye there. Okay. So now that's kind of a blank, vacant expression. Let's go ahead and give it a little smirk. Um, and the way we do that is we will rebuild this line. Sure. Good amount of points. Probably could have done eight, but nine's fine. So now I'm going to go ahead and sh shift select or left to right select these two control points, bring it up a little bit. And then I'm going to grab these control points, shift and grab these ones, bring those up. A little bit as well. And then I'm going to shift and add just these two and kind of pull it up. So we got a, like a nice little smirk face there. Okay. Now we want to go points off. Turn all the points off. Symmetrical. All looks good. But we can't just have a line. A line will not work. We need to have a sense of depth always. This is a 3D object. We always need to be able to have um, something that can be pushed in or pulled out so that there's actually a little bit of topology to it. So we're going to offset this. 
and we'll do a distance of 0.5. So D, enter 0.5, enter. Great. Now we're going to draw a circle to kind of round out the corners of the mouth. And we're going to do a two-point circle. So what that means is I can draw a circle from this point to this point. Enter brings up the same command. However, it's not sticky with this one, so I do need to click the two-point again. Two-point, or you can hit the number two if you can't find that. There we go. And then we can trim with this as our cutting object. Enter this and this. Enter or spacebar. I always hit... I always say enter, but that's just because we're executing a command, right? So enter just makes sense. However, the spacebar works just fine, and it tends to be a bigger button. Okay, left to right, select this, and then we join it together. All one piece, beautiful. That means that you drew it all correctly. If you did not, switch into perspective here and look at it, make sure it's flat. It should all be flat. And that's also why I drew it away from this, so I don't have anything snapping or, or giving me problems there. Awesome. So next step is to move it onto the face, and then we're going to um, project it onto the face to make it part of the features. So to uh, get the face over, what we're going to do is we'll switch to a front view, and we will move this. So type the command move after having it selected. And I'm going to click on this midpoint here. And I kind of want it to line up with the middle on this. So I'm gonna hit zero, enter. And that's gonna move it to our zero point. And then I'm gonna move it up so that the nose is right on the top of that curve that's going there. Actually, I want the eyes to be right there. Let's see. Okay, actually, the eyes at the kind of the bottom of the curve there. That's better. All right, let's switch to a perspective view. And then we want to pull this out this direction. Okay, let's look at it in the front view again. And I feel like the eyes might be a little too far apart. So let's go ahead and left to right select, left to right select. And they're actually a little too thick too, I would say. So let's go ahead and scale. It's gonna make them skinnier too. Yeah, that'll kind of give me, I think, what I'm looking for. All right, back to perspective. Next, we wanna project these lines. We can get rid of these kind of these guidelines, I think. Delete, delete, delete. So I want to project these lines onto that surface. So go back to a front view. It has to be in the front view for this to work. Go to our standard tab over here. And this right here, this command is project curves or control points. Um, so I'm going to left to right select. Oh, there's all those control points. So let me lock this. Actually, you know what? No, I'm just going to click on it. Fine. So select all of this left to right. And then let's bring up the command. And then it says select the surfaces to project onto, click on this, enter. And from this view, it will project it all the way onto the object, but it also goes kind of all the way through the object too. Okay. Yeah, and it makes me realize that the shape of the face is a little off. So I'm gonna undo that. And I'm going to control shift click this and this or command shift click if you have a Mac and we'll kind of move this so it's a little bit flatter in the front. And then I'm going to move these over maybe two millimeters. And then this one over as well, negative two. So since it's going the opposite direction and let's look at it from a front view again here. Hmm. Maybe it was one. Yeah. Okay, so let's move these back one. So you're just trying to line it up so that it looks kind of like the reference. And then maybe the smile, how's the smile? A little too big on the smile too. 
So let's shift and scale this in. Mm. Yeah, shift and scale it in. That's looking better, I think. Okay, so now from a front view, let's project. Uh, first select them so that we're not dealing with control points. Select them, hit that, hit that. Back to perspective. And then we have to make sure we delete, left to right select, and delete the curves off the back of the head. Okay, and then I like to create a new layer over here. If you don't have the layers tab open, it's right there. Call them curves. And then select these curves here for now, right click and change object layer, and then hide that layer so that we can get rid of them, but we have access if we need to get back to them. And you know what? No. I think, yeah, let's get rid of these ones. Or these ones are fine. This this one's too low. We kind of want that curve to be up higher, right? Like up there almost. Okay, cool. So we switch back to a front view. And then I'm just going to move this so that it kind of lines up with that a little bit better. Since I moved that up in space, but I just kind of did it in like an arbitrary way, it, it doesn't fit that surface anymore. But it's about where we want it to be when we do project it. Yeah. So now I've got that as a reference. I can switch back to a front view. I'm going to move this line up to match up with it. And then I can delete it. Go back to perspective, left to right select and delete it. Switch to a front view again and project it back onto the surface. So project this, enter this, enter. Okay, back to perspective. Yeah, now that nose positioning looks better. All right, turn off our curves. Okay, cool. So now the next step is we're going to split this object with those surfaces. So type split, this object, enter with this, 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 and that. And this is going to change it from a uh, sub D to NURBS. So, um, and I've got my display settings set. Yours might look like this. Change the display settings to get rid of that just so there's a little less information. Okay, so now we want to make these have some topology. And what I mean by that is if I look at this um, without the curves, so let me go to edit, select the objects, curves, and then go back to my layers tab, right click and change object layer here. Put those curves on the layer. These are now the cut areas that we cut out earlier. But if we look at it in rendered, you can see there is no shape to it. Okay, so we need to make shape to it. So we'll go to shaded. And then I'm going to shift select both of these. And I'm going to use a little ball here to extrude this that direction. I'll do two millimeters in. Oops, no, too much. Undo, still selected. Let's do 0.5. That's better. And then I'm going to explode these two. Or actually, you know what? Let's go extract surface is probably easier. Extract surface and just make sure you grab all of them. Enter, delete. Extract surface, do the same thing over here. and delete. So what that now gives us, if we look at it rendered, we've got some shape to it. All right, switch over to rendered here, back to shaded. And then one thing about these here is we're gonna join all of this back together. So it's all one piece, except for, you know, we still wanna keep these separated for now because we're gonna deal with those in a second. 
Actually, I think we can even join those together too. Join the whole thing together. We can still command shift click on these because they're faces. But you know what? No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to just leave them separate. Okay. Control Z undo. Okay. So this is all one piece. Um, and then I can select this and I can select this. And then I'm going to extrude this back 0.25. Uh, no, control Z. Let's do extrude back. Let's do 0.4 because this is just supposed to be like a highlight. Okay. So extruded those back 0.4. Let's do that again one more time. Just make sure control shift click or command shift click. If you have a Mac, grab the little ball 0.4. Awesome. So that way it looks more like a highlight instead of, um, anything else it'll be just like a little dot where we can where we can extract the surface and put white there okay next step is the nose the nose is going to protrude out so select that and we'll grab the little ball and i'm going to do a negative 0.25 just a little extrusion there and then the mouth will go back the ball point five and then again extract surface just to grab that surface off of this solid object that is recessed into it delete and join it all together and we know everything is right if we click on it hit delete and we see oh we see the nose so z enter s enter Oops, Z, enter, S, enter to zoom in on the selected object. We see the nose actually has a back to it. We don't want that back. So um, we can extract surface again and just click on these surfaces, enter, delete, so that it's open because watch when I bring back the face. Oops, I actually deleted it. I forgot. Join. Okay, it doesn't need to be joined. It's already joined. So I'm going to go Control X to cut it. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Okay, so you can see that it's we're inside the face now, and you can see that uh, that we can um, th that there's like this line thing that's happening here. If I extract surface, this surface, this surface, this, and this, and that, and hit delete, now we've got that negative space. And the whole goal of always modeling um, any character or any design is to have what we call a uh, watertight solid. So the exterior surface of it is all one piece that if you were to fill it up with water, it would completely fill up all the nooks and crannies of it. And the reason why we want that is so that it's 3D printable. You can't 3D print it otherwise. So your interior shape should look like that. And I'm, when I'm zooming in on this, I'm selecting parts of it. Like if I select the nose and I go Z, enter, S, enter, it locks the display on that nose. And so I can rotate all the way around it. It makes it really easy to work on parts. So that's actually a really important tool to know how to do. Even though it doesn't seem like it would be, it is. All right. So let's look at it in rendered here. Okay, so we're making some progress. It's looking pretty good. Cool. So the next step is some ears. Oh yeah, I forgot we wanna join the nose to the face. Join, enter. Again, click, delete, nothing, good. Control Z brings it all back. So let's make the ears next. So switch to shaded view and go to a front view and come over here to the right and we'll uh, make the ears. So I'm gonna do the ears in a circle. So draw a circle and diameter of the circle is gonna be 35. Awesome. And then I'm gonna pull in the sides here. Oh, I've got grid snap turned on, turn that off. <laughs> pull in the sides here. So we're kind of getting a little bit of shapeliness. And then I'm gonna rebuild and I might need a couple more. I'm going to go up to 12 here. Okay. All right.
right. I'm going to pull this one up. Oh, I can't do that because I want to keep it that size. Okay. So left to right select, bring these two in. Okay. And then I'm going to bring these two down. Okay. And that's actually not too bad. Actually, I'm going to bring the next, these two out. Oops. Got to grab these bottom two as well. Yeah. All right. So that gives me my ear shape. Okay. So the next step is to go ahead and um, create a surface from this shape so that we can work with that. And the way I like to do that is actually just uh, to go ahead and extrude. Just type the word extrude curve and I'll do 0.5 for my thickness. So not very thick. It doesn't even matter because what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to go ahead and say extract surface. I'm going to grab just that front surface here and pull it over there. And then I can discard the rest. So basically Z enter S enter to zoom on the selected here. I'm just creating a flat surface. Then I'm going to convert this flat surface to a sub D. So let's do that. Um, we'll call it quad remesh. And I'm going to do a target triangle or a quad count of 14. Yeah, 14. Adaptive is fine. Convert to sub D. Make sure that it is symmetrical on the Y axis. Um, and hit OK. Great. And then I'll move this over here, sub D. Move it over here. Great. So now to give that a bit of thickness, I'm going to offset the sub D. So just type offset sub D. Make sure you have solid selected as yes here. And I'll do 0.5. Enter. Okay. So now I've got this sol um, sub D in the kind of shape of our, our ear. <clears throat> All right, great. So the next step here is to give it a little bit of depth in the back there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go to some edge filtering. And I'm going to grab all of the edges in the back here. Hold down the shift key. <laughs> I've got to do that. And then pull it out. Oops, I double clicked on the gumball. It does that. Mm. Control, click on this one and this bottom one. Pull it out. Okay. And then I'm going to grab maybe this bottom one here, pull it out a little bit more. Oh, I need to grab those two. So, also, I'm noticing that I'm pulling the front. I don't want to do that. So, that means that I've got my um, soft transform too big here. So, let's grab these again, click on soft transform and make it, I'm going to make it really small because I don't want to affect the front. So when I pull this way, yeah, I'm still affecting the front some. Hmm. Hmm. Well, another thing I can do is I can actually um, switch to face selection here. Let's select all these faces and add another level because see there's only just the one here if i click on the little extrude here every time i pull this out it adds another little level when i release the click so now i've got three little lines on the side there it should give me enough separation to where i should be able to hopefully not affect the front face when i'm soft transforming here So that works cool all right and then maybe i can pull the scale down some so i'm pulling the shape in uh maybe i'll grab just these two this time and pull this out a little bit more so i'm just kind of shaping it trying to get like the back shape of the ear okay looks good great and then 
now that I've done that, I can actually, um, with my edge selection on here, I can double click on these edges and I can just delete those edges. And now I've got a flat face on there with only one edge on there. I can now even um, go ahead and grab these faces on the front and kind of squish it in a little bit more so it's not so thick. So just kind of tricking the sub D into doing what you want it to. And you'll find that that, that it's intuitive to a level. Um, it, it's kind of a simple tool, but uh, to get it to do exactly what you want, sometimes you've got to know how it works and how it behaves to, to get it to do exactly what you're trying to get it to do. Okay. So there's our little ear shape. Now the ear has a little bit of a ridge on it. Um, and kind of the easiest way I would say to make that ridge shape is to um, cut out a flat ver another flat piece in the front here. So if I, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So um, let me get rid of all my selection tool here by clicking on that. Now if I click on this, um, I, what I wanna do is I'm gonna copy if I hit Alt and move, it'll copy that piece. Now I can rotate this 180, and then I'm gonna scale the whole thing down by holding Shift, and switch to a front view here just so I can really see how it lines up. Okay, and I'm gonna pull it down some, because I want it to be a nice even little ridge around it. So okay, cool, perspective. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and just put this inside of this a little bit and Boolean difference it. So I wanna keep this one, enter, get rid of this one. And it will, yes, convert it to NURBS. Ah. Poly surface. Where's my poly surface? <laughs> poly surface. Okay. Yeah. So this is our poly surface now. And if we look at it in rendered, you can see I've got a nice little kind of like a ridge on the inside for the in inner color of the ear. Okay. So that's that part of the ear. Um, and then we're almost done with the face oh, with the head. So all we got to do to finish the head up is um, there's little bits of fur and stuff that, that kind of um, overlap on top of the head and where the ears meet up. So I'm going to go over to a front view here. Actually, let me just get rid of all of this stuff. And you can keep the curves on the curves layer if you want and go to a front view. And let's move the ear into position. click out of it, click it again. And notice I do not have auto seaplane turned on. Auto seaplane would be kind of in the way here, top here. And where does it line up in the top? Almost the middle. Back to a front view. And how do we want the ears to be? A little bit flatter, up high. You know, I think that also gives it a little bit of personality too. So it's up to you how you want the ears to look. And then um, once you get it kind of in the position, I'm going to mirror and go from the endpoint straight down. You can use grid snap if you want. Go to perspective. Cool. So little furry bits on the top. That's about all we're looking for next. So we'll be using um, sub D cones to create those little fur, uh, fur pieces. Um, okay, let's go to a front view. Actually, no, let's go stick in perspective here, switch to shaded. And I feel like the ears need to even be a little bit bigger maybe. Hmm. Yeah, let me just scale it up. All right. Yeah, that looks a little better. Mirror this over again. Zero. 
just typed zero because that gives me the zero point of the line, which my head is lined up with, which is what I want. Okay. That looks a little bit better. All right. So um, to create kind of a, a fur looking um, form, what we can do is we can use sub D cones, which just look like that. And Z enter S enter. So I'm zoomed in on my selection and I can just kind of flatten this out, grab the top parts of it, control shift and kind of click on those top parts left to right selecting, give it a little tilt and yeah, so that's fine. <clears throat> and then I want to do two of those. So I'm going to alt to copy this and then maybe I'll do this one a little bit less curved. So it's a little, maybe this way and then we'll rotate them a little, give it the hair and the ears first. Until I click out of it, it's going to keep that alignment, which I like. So I'm going to go to a top view, just kind of perfectly line it up with where we're going. Z enter S enter to zoom on the selection, just so I can see how it's overlapping and stuff. Awesome. And then I'm going to scale it out like that and scale it up like that. Have it fill in that space a little bit more. You don't want to click out of it because if you click out of it, when you click back on it, the, the gumball is going this way. However, you can right click on the gumball and align it to the object. If I click here, then when I click on the object, oh, let's see, gumball, right click, align to, hmm. I guess it's going to, huh. Gumball line to mm. let's see. Yeah, well, when you click out of it, it, it makes it hard again to maneuver it around. That's <laughs> basically what I'm saying. So now when I scale it, it's going to scale in a little bit funny. All right, let's look at it in render to see if our proportions and stuff are looking pretty good. I almost feel like this is a little bit too big. So shift, scale it down. And I'll move it. Yeah, it looks good. All right, I'll just, uh, you know, mirror it onto the other side. Mirror, enter, zero, enter. And I'm using that zero from this view to flip it to the other side because we're aligned on the Y axis. All right, so the next step is to go ahead and do the uh, little bit of fur on the top of the head here. Uh, and we're going to do that just uh, basically the same way we did uh, the fur inside the ear here. So we're going to do some sub D cones. So um, I'm going to select my cone tool here. Um, and I'm going to change some of the faces here. I want to do four vertical faces and three faces around. I'm going to make it a little bit more minimal. Um, just kind of pull out and up. And then we can kind of change the shape of it a little bit. And I want these to have a little bit more depth to them. So I'm going to pull this back a couple of parts out. Whoop. You can see I've got my soft transform too big. So I'll reduce it down so that I'm only manipulating a little bit less of the shape here. Hmm. No, you know what? I got to do more facets on the cone. So again, sub D cone here. And I'm going to do four around. And that way you've got a little bit more um, distance between the two sides, which will allow the front face to stay relatively flat when we pull these back parts out. 
again, all of this is just really starting to get a feel for how to manipulate sub Ds. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab this edge here, pull it back a little bit more, just like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab this side. Oh, let's double click on these. Control Shift click on this, 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 this. Pull over here, 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 and here. I'm gonna pull them out. Fatten up the cone a little bit. And then I'm gonna crease these. So just type crease, okay. And that crease is a little too brutal. So um, if I type in, here, let's control Z, sub D crease. And instead of constant weight, we change that to maybe 90% instead. It's gonna give it a little softer edge there, but actually I do want it to be even softer. So let's go to edge selection up here too, just so I'm not going crazy with the commands here. And sub decrease. And then I'm gonna go eighty percent. Okay, cool. And then I'm gonna grab the the um, the vertice at the top here, and I'm gonna crease that. Mm, no, I'm not gonna crease that. <laughs> Undo. I'll just pull it over a little bit. Okay. And you know, I'm gonna actually put an edge loop in the front here so I can kind of pull in the front here. So you can add edge loops to the uh, sub Ds just right here. If I, eh. go like that. That way I can go to face select here, grab this face. Kind of start to pull it this way a little bit. Okay. A little big overall, um, but I can change the size of it just to fit what I want. And then I'm just gonna hit Alt, copy this over one, two, three, four, five, six. Holding down Alt with each one of those moves gives me my copy. All right, and then I'm gonna kind of come through with my vertice selection here. Select this vertice, kind of move it around so that they're not all doing the exact same thing. Add a little variation to the shape. And turn that off, move these over a little bit. And I'm gonna pull this edge over a little this way. I might get rid of this edge loop too on one of these. Grab this up. Okay. And then let's do this one a little bit over.
All right, and then let's look at edit and rendered here. Looks good from the front, um, but the back is a little funky with these, uh, where these parts are coming together here. So um, what I'm gonna do with that is kind of come back in here and manipulate that a little bit more. So let's go back to shaded here, hide this. And then I wanna kind of pull some of these edges Cool, so yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Um, and we'll just leave that like that and we'll move on to uh, some other body parts. Let's start off with, uh, you know, the, uh, the torso area in the next part here.